There's a new article out there looking back at the 2022 football season for the BYU football program that has ups and downs to the Cougars, as we would all expect. We'll talk about that and how it might relate to BYU entering the Big 12 in 2023. And we also know when Mormons versus Mullets, the Redux, is going to happen. We'll talk about all of it ahead on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show. We're proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network. The motto is your team every day. And as such, this is your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. Today's title sponsors are friends over at FanDuel. This episode is brought to you by the FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more with our friends at FanDuel. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get started all right diving right in on today's show let's talk some BYU football looking back at 2022 and hopefully uh, some of these metrics that Brett Ciancia from pick six previews he did a really cool article for ksl.com that I was reading over and I figured I would uh, lift from it and talk a little bit about some of the metrics he has out there we've had Brett on the show a uh, guy that usually uh, comes on in the lead up to the upcoming football season every summer does a great job with his annual preview he calls it the pick six previews he looks only at the power of five conferences and BYU is who he's in, in also involved in that. And obviously BYU will be a member of the power five moving forward. So no longer a special circumstance that requires him to have BYU as part of his previews. But what he did is he went back and looked at all the numbers for BYU from the 2022 season and highlighted both some good and some bad when it came to the BYU Cougars. And I'm not uh, completely, uh, well, I guess I'll say, I won't be completely surprised if any of you are like, well, that's not surprising uh, today when it talks about this, Jake, but the biggest thing, let's dive right in and talk about this first thing. Uh, he has what he calls his game grader grade, and BYU ranked 50th out of the 66 Power 5 teams. He goes through all of the Power 5 teams and ranks these uh, 1 to 66. What it is, game grader measures to, to, uh, excuse me, statistical dominance and adjust for opponent strength. It says BYU reached as high as number 10 in this rating after the September win over Baylor, but it was a steady decline after that. The four-game losing streak in October, minus 180 yards per game on margin, sank BYU down to its lowest grade since the 4-9 campaign in 2017. The 2022 season finishes the lowest, second lowest rated team over their entire independence era. Obviously that 4-9 squad in 2017 is the only one lower. So, that means BYU uh, definitely was not up to snuff, but they had some metrics here, according to Ciancia, that were positive. They had BYU, the 24th of 66 Power 5 teams in offensive per, uh, percentiles. He had them 46 in the defensive per percentiles. And then here's an interesting one that I wanted to highlight here. Most of you, and I, I would I would agree with this, would believe that BYU's offensive line was not as good as it had been in previous years. But... According to Brett Ciancia, offensive line rush, a uh, run push. This stat takes the normal yards per carry number and focuses on the opportunities created by the offensive line within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. Beyond 10 yards, you could argue yards are more earned by the uh, back's playmaking ability in the open field. So BYU ranked 19th of the 131 FBS teams as compared to 22nd in 2021. Yes, according to Brett Ciancia, BYU's offensive line run uh, game wise was actually better than it was in 2021. Now you're probably wondering, okay, how about the pass protection? Well, BYU again placed in the top 15 in sack rate by allowing just 13 sacks out of 392 pass attempts. That 3.3% rate is 12th in the FBS and 6th in the Power 5, so obviously a great number for BYU there. The 12th out of 131 FBS team is actually uh, one spot worse than they were in 2021. So this offensive line, according to Ciancia and the ratings here, is that BYU was better uh, in the run game than they were in 2021, but just a little bit worse in the pass game. Now, my my eyeballs would tell me otherwise, but he did add this. BYU's offensive line made huge gains from their middle of the pack midseason rankings of 63rd to sur surge into the national top 20 in the back half of the season. Well, when was BYU's softer part of their schedule to, uh, last year? 
the back half of the season. So that's not all that surprising. It was a veteran unit that excelled both in run and pass protection for the second straight season. So that's obviously something BYU will try to carry over to next year, despite losing five starting caliber guys from that offensive line. Now, let's talk about uh, the defense for a minute here. Now, explosive defense is the defensive strategy has always been bend, don't break. The drop eight, all that type of stuff. Uh, the, the stat that he mentions for explosive defense is it me measures how frequently a defense contains those, quote, explosive long yardage plays. And given BYU's defensive scheme where they wanted to keep everything in front of them, that's where they typically have thrived. But they actually were worse in this ranking, 35th out of 131 FBS teams as compared to 25th in 2021 but then it gets just all the much worse and this is why i think jay hill has his work cut out for him to rebuild this byu defense the negative play rate on defense 130th out of 131 teams there's only one team worse it says this is a no surprise given their approach byu rarely blitzes more than three or four rushers and accordingly is not making plays in the backfield which is this is what they're trying to do sacks tackles for loss that type of stuff measures the frequency of plays made behind the line of scrimmage and byu was second worst in all of the fbs ranks and i know that jay hills already promised that will not be a thing that will happen under his defense if he can help it he will be a guy who is going to attack he's going to blitz he's going to bring extra Extra bodies to make sure this number improves. Then also opponent QB rating 112th out of 131 teams in the bottom tier of all of the FBS ranks. They were 54th in 2021 in this ranking. He says, I prefer this stat when discussing passing defense because it puts the stats into a per play perspective. He says that here in the all encompassing pass defense measure, BYU finished among the nation's worst. So I think all these metrics indicate that BYU has plenty of work to do this spring. Obviously, in, in investing and getting a new defense implemented under Jay Hill's tenure will be critical to BYU's chances going into the Big 12. But those numbers, as bad as they were, the only thing you can say is that BYU really only has one way to go, and that is up. And they've obviously already tried to invest in recruiting and bringing in new defensive linemen. They've brought in some edge pass rushing. They've got an All-American cornerback from the FCF ranks and uh, Eddie Heckard coming in to hopefully bolster BYU secondary. So there are some signs that BYU can improve and hopefully should improve in 2023 going into the Big 12. But the other thing, the, the kind of the flip side of that whole argument is, yes, those metrics were awful, but the, you're going to have to face off against maybe the toughest schedule. And I'd probably say it is going to be the toughest schedule BYU's ever faced. Facing 10 Power 5 teams, something that BYU has never done before in their football history, it is going to be a lot for BYU to handle. But as bad as they were in 2022, the hope is that they can at least marginally improve in 2023. Now we also uh, have a couple other notes out there when it comes to scheduling for BYU football, looking at 2023 and also a decade from now that we'll get to here in just a moment. Some interesting stuff because remember that whole Mormons versus mullets thing in coastal Carolina. Well, guess what? We're getting the rematch. We'll tell you when that's going to happen coming up here momentarily. First, a word on our friends over at, uh, uh, actually, our friends over at, geez, I can't even get this thing to open. Apologies. But our first word on our friends over at FanDuel. Of course, they've been with us for many, many years, working with us every single day right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. The more important part about FanDuel is we're very excited to have them as our new sports betting partner right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. They are the number one sports book in America. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better because they have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. And they want you to take advantage of Super Bowl 57 this Sunday. The only app you need is be to have FanDuel open to have some fun with this. Download FanDuel today and you can bet on Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Through that right, 3K potentially back in bets if your first bet doesn't win. The best part is FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to point spreads, who will score a touchdown or any other prop bet that you can imagine. It's all available now on the FanDuel app. The best part is that app is safe, secure, and easy to use. And you also get your paid out your winnings instantly from our friends at FanDuel. No having to wait and have to fill out paperwork, all that stuff. It's all taken care of. You can essentially just move on with your life and have those winnings in your pocket ASAP. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash locked on to claim your no sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Once again, make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Thank you once again for checking out Locked On Cougars. I want to encourage you guys to make sure you check out Locked On College Basketball. Everything you need to know about the college basketball sphere in one place. Plus, hear from big-name experts, insiders, coaches, and players alike. That's Locked On College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever 
you get your podcast. All right, let's talk a little bit about what's going on uh, with BYU football and scheduling moving forward here for the Cougars. Now, uh, we talked about this. I actually tweeted about it, so we haven't talked about it. But BYU and Coastal Carolina had that, uh, we'll call it fortuitous matchup in 2021 the mormons versus mullets that whole deal put together on a whim uh it was like three days and byu was on their way to face off against coastal carolina came up a yard short of getting a big win that would have kept byu's undefeated season alive in that pandemic ridden season well they had always said that this game had a handshake agreement to have a return game uh to have byu host coastal carolina at lavelle edwards stadium now I would have liked to have seen this, you know, in my, in theory, lifetime, because this game has been scheduled per report from fbschedules.com doing a great job of getting this uh, via a records request that BYU will take on Coastal Carolina on September 17th, 2033. Yes, a decade from now, uh, my daughter, who is six years old, will be 16 and in theory driving at that point when BYU <laughs> And Coastal Carolina make the the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers make the return trip to Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Will anybody currently associated with either one of those programs still be in those positions? I would hope Kalani Satake is. He's made it no qualms about the fact that he'd like to be a lifer. He wants to be a Lavelle Edwards type at BYU. But to think of this a decade from now being on the books, it's absolutely crazy. The crazy thing about this is, according to FB schedules, the contract amendment, which set this date, was actually dated November 30th, 2021, about one year after the in initial game and almost three months following the official announcement that BYU would join the Big 12 Conference. So these two, uh, the Coastal Carolina and BYU Athletic Departments, got together and set this date almost two, uh, a year and a half ago, roughly. It's crazy to think it we kind of flew under the radar this far, but BYU will be facing off against Coastal Carolina and hoping to get some revenge. Uh, it was a really funny tweet uh, from Dax Milne, obviously the guy who came up a yard short in that game of uh, scoring the winning touchdown he said hey can i have some eligibility back uh, to play in this game now dax i think he's what 22 at this point be in his mid 30s by the time this game comes around but hey you know what dress him up put a number on him and let him do what he can do it'd be kind of fun to uh, see something like that obviously be uh, flouting all kinds of eligibility rules in the ncaa or whatever the ncaa looks like at that point but nonetheless Looking forward to that matchup. Now, the other thing is we've got some news via the Oklahoman out there in uh, central Oklahoma this week. Uh, Barry Trammell, obviously a sports columnist out there for the Oklahoman, a guy I've had on my radio show many, many times. A great, great man. Obviously tied into what's going on with Oklahoma State and the University of Oklahoma football programs. Uh, Oklahoma is going to face BYU November 18th. We all know that. Senior day for BYU on their schedule. Looking forward to that one. It's a huge game. Maybe the biggest game on BYU schedule this year. I'm, I'm not being facetious about this. It's a huge monumental deal to have Oklahoma coming to LES to face off against the Cougars. But because Oklahoma actually faces a quick turnaround, they actually have a Friday uh, regular season finale the following week against TCU. They have requested uh, via the Big 12 that BYU, Oklahoma, that game should be played during the game during the day during November 18th. That obviously be a boon uh, for any of you who want to see BYU and in, in theory, better weather with the, the actual sun up rather than being an 815 kickoff at night. The reason why Oklahoma wants to do that, because if they were to play that game late night, 738, 830 kickoff, then they get on a plane around midnight here, local time, even later than that, potentially midnight, 1 a.m., 1.30. And then by the time they get home to Norman, it's close to sunrise. And that obviously puts a dent in their ability to kind of get turned around and get ready for a, a short week to finish off their regular season on Black Friday. So they have requested that the Big 12, and when they scheduled this out with ESPN, Fox, etc., that those TV partners take into account that Oklahoma wants this to be a day game against BYU. Now, BYU, obviously, uh, they would be thinking, okay, if we play at night in the cold, might be a little bit of an advantage for us playing at elevation and all that. But here's the thing. Late November games for BYU, I think they need to push them just a little bit earlier. It's brutal for fans. I know many of you out there have youth sports earlier on in the year. October and October and September games. You want them a little bit later so you can get done with your kids' games, all that type of stuff, and then go enjoy BYU in the evening. But in November, in theory, most of the time, call uh, high school and uh, youth sports are moving indoors, and obviously they usually have a kind of a lull in the scheduling at that point. And I'm, I'm speaking from a neophyte's experience. I'm speaking from my daughter and son's experience. But there's usually a little bit of a gap there. 
So I actually would appreciate if Oklahoma can make this happen because I'd like to see it an afternoon kick. If it's a 1.30 kick mountain time, even if it's like a 3 or a 4 o'clock kick, that'd be phenomenal, I think for BYU. It gets them on the East Coast in primetime windows when college football fans back East will be watching. Obviously, it's a power brand in Oklahoma coming to Provo, and if Oklahoma wants it, I think the Big 12 will acquiesce to their request. They've already kind of hosed Oklahoma and Texas in the scheduling process. Maybe they'll bend on this one thing, and I think BYU, I would, if I was BYU, I would say, okay, we're okay with that. But obviously, you can play hardball, and obviously, it will be ultimately up to the uh, programmers out there, ESPN and Fox mainly, to make their decision on what's going to happen with that game. But it sounds like Oklahoma is very intent on making sure this game is played during the day. And, hey, more power to them if they can make it happen. Because, like I said, I I think it works better for all fans if that's how everything's going to go down for BYU and Oklahoma in this one. But only time will tell before we ultimately know know the shakeout of what's going to happen on that front. So uh, I think overall, by the way, I just continue to look at BYU schedule uh and uh, a couple of you reached out and said jake have you rethought potentially about what you uh, have pro- prognosticated for byu six and six is kind of six Six and six is where I've kind of stated I think a successful season is for BYU. Uh, I'm going to think about that more. Like I said, I've had a number of you reach out this week and say that maybe you should downgrade or upgrade your opinion on this. I'm going to stick it at six and six, but I'll continue to think about this. And a couple of you actually sent me a video link. I need to watch the video uh, from BYU Sports Nation. Apparently, they had a great discussion about this, and I will watch that and get with you, get a response to you. I think it was Jared, actually, that reached out, I believe, uh, that sent me that note. And we'll get to that and we'll talk about uh what to what to expect from BYU and I'll see if I kind of revise my thought process on this but I just have a hard time really buying into the thought that BYU is capable of really running a gauntlet in their first year as a power five program and pushing beyond potentially six and six. Now, if Keaton Slovis becomes the guy that everybody thought he was going to be at USC as a freshman and a sophomore, well, maybe I'll have to revise my thought process as the season progresses, but that's a ways, way, way a ways off for me to be evaluating that. And obviously I reserve the right to adjust my expectations, but I just think if you get to bowl eligibility, I, I think that would be a good start for BYU in the Big 12 era. Like I said, anything beyond that, I'd be ecstatic for. Seven and five, eight and four. That means BYU is further along in their being ready to absorb a power five, uh, con- uh, not contract, uh, uh, I'm going to try to say a schedule than I would have ever thought they would have been. So we'll we'll dig into that a little bit more, but we'll talk about that as the week progresses. Also coming up uh, this week, hoping to have a conversation with Coog Connect. Want to get you guys a little more uh, detail on what NIL involves from the ground level, essentially, from the people who are putting this together. Also doing my best to get the Royal Collective on here as well, to talk about what they're doing in the NIL space for BYU athletes, BYU football in particular. We'll get to all those conversations later on in this week, so stay tuned for those as uh, coming shows come up later. Later in the week. All right, coming up next, we get back to something that I have. Uh, okay, I'll admit I, I got a little lazy on this. We're diving right back in. We uh, stopped halfway through the 2012 season. Our look back at all 155 BYU football games from their independent era. Well, I want to get back to that. We left off with uh, Utah State in a 63 win for BYU. Well, the following week they had a huge matchup in Provo. They were wearing those blackout uniforms for the first time ever in BYU football history going up against a nationally ranked Oregon State squad. Well, we'll talk about what happened coming up in mere moments. First, a word on our friends over at Built Bar. Now, Built Bar has been a big part of the Locked On Podcast Network, Locked On Cougars in particular, because they are the best tasting protein bars that I've ever had. The macros on these things are absolutely incredible. Between 4 and 5 grams of sugar, uh, 130 to 170 calories, depending on the bar. But more importantly, between 16 and 20 grams of protein packed into each one of these protein bars. Like I said, you will not find a better tasting protein bar that has the same level of macros, and I would put the Built Bar up against anything. Thing. The best part is, and a number of you asked me this question, actually, when I talked about it earlier this week, is that BYU, they get money, obviously, for all of their student-athletes via NIL from Built Bar. They have a team-wide deal. Now, if you want to contribute directly to the BYU football program, by all means, continue to buy your Built Bars. But if you want to contribute in one specific way, they have the Cougar Tell flavor available at Built.com. You buy that box of Built Bars, that money, there's a portion of it that goes directly right back into the BYU football program. Obviously, Built is using their some uh, part of 
sum total of their parts when it comes to their sales to obviously help BYU with NIL. But the Cougar Tell flavor is exclusive to the BYU football program and also, like I said, gives money directly back into the athletic department and the BYU football program as a result. So go to Built.com and place your order there. But if there are other flavors you're looking for, you're jonesing for, you also can stop into your local Smith's and or Sam's Club today to pick those up. Smith's has four bar packs available to you. Now, uh, Sam's Club, as they are want to do, they have their bulk packets, uh, packages, excuse me, of 13 bars available to you now. So you get to Smith's or Sam's Club to pick up your various flavors available now. But if you want to get the Cougar Tail flavor, you got to go to Built.com. We're going to save you some money while you go to Built.com as well. Locked on 15 is 15% off your order. You're there at L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. 1515 for 15% off your order. Save some money now. Get to built.com or go into your local Smith's or Sam's Club and enjoy the best tasting protein bars with our friends at Built Bar. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at UCCU. And they got a great promotion going on right now. Of course, at UCCU, Love Where You Bank is a promise made by a local not for profit financial institution dedicated to helping families improve their financial lives. UCCU delivers on that promise. They are pioneering new technologies to make banking safer, easier, and more convenient. They're also creating new products and services that add real value to their members. They provide easy access to real local human beings who always give personal help or assistance. And I can attest to this because I have been a UCCU uh, customer for three decades now. So there are many reasons to love banking with UCCU. And now UCCU is sharing 14 reasons to love where you bank. Here's the best part. UCCU is giving away a stay at the Grand America Hotel, complete with a visit to the Grand Spa until Valentine's Day, both on Facebook and Instagram. See why you'll love banking with UCCU. When you see a post, love it, and you'll be automatically entered to win the Grand America Experience. Once again, a stay at the Grand America Hotel, as well as a stop at the Grand Spa inside the hotel there. So when you see a post, love it, and you'll be automatically entered to win that Enter each day. Visit UCCU's Facebook or Instagram pages now until Valentine's Day to enter to win. That's UCCU. Love where you bank. Thank you once again for checking out Locked On Cougars and making it your first listen of the day. You guys are absolutely phenomenal. Thank you for your support of the podcast. Now, as I said, I've been slacking on this. We had a very busy week last week, but I want to get right back to it. So, We've been going through all of BYU's 155 uh, games they played in their independent era as a way to get us ready for the upcoming season. We left off uh, almost a week and change ago uh, with Utah State 6-3. to three. And now I forgot one very critical thing from that Utah State discussion is that Taysom Hill uh, came out of that game looking like he may end up being the guy who takes over the quarterback mantle from Riley Nelson. But late in that game against Utah State, Taysom Hill suffered a season-ending injury the first First of many that he suffered as a BYU Cougar, the first of two, if I recall correctly, that happened against Utah State. Well, obviously, that pressed a guy like Riley Nelson to come in and get back into the saddle, and that's what he did as BYU was going to wear their blackout uniforms. I remember this was absolutely thrilling news. I was so excited to see these BYU uh, wearing black uniforms with royal and white, royal blue and white accents on them for the very first time as a football program. While well, they were welcoming in number 10-ranked Oregon State. Now, the Beavers were 5-0 and coming into this game. Uh, they had obviously been riding the arm of Sean Mannion, who went on to have an NFL career. But a week and change before this game, he suffered a knee injury that pressed uh, junior Cody Vaz, who had not started a game in his Oregon State career uh, since high school, it's pressed into action against BYU. Now, like I said, BYU is a little bit of a beehive down there at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Welcoming in Oregon State, BYU had gone up to Corvallis and won the previous year, and that was a thrilling win for BYU in many ways. They're hoping to make it a second straight time against the 10th-ranked Beavers. Well, Cody Vaz had other ideas. He comes in and only passes uh, 20 of 32 completion uh, percentage, 332 yards, three touchdowns, and zero interceptions. Looked absolutely marvelous against one of the better BYU defense we have seen in the past three or four decades of BYU football. That 2012 defense for BYU typically did not get torched, but they got absolutely torched in this game by Cody Vaz. Brandon Cooks, who obviously went on to have, has had actually, he's still playing, a very healthy NFL career. I had eight receptions for 173 yards, absolutely just cooking BYU secondary. Marcus Wheaton, who also had a spell in the NFL, he had five receptions for 66 yards and two of the touchdowns that Cody Vaz threw. Riley Nelson uh, did duel uh, quite nicely in the passing yardage side of things for BYU in this game. 28 of 51 completion, uh, but he also had 305 yards passing. But the incredible number here, 
one touchdown against three interceptions. Now, Riley had been dealing with a back injury. We all know that. We've talked about this and having Taysom Hill lost for the season. Obviously, hurt BYU. But the other thing is that hurt BYU was their inability to get the ground game going. Jamal Williams led the way for BYU with 15 carries for just 36 yards. It's an average of 2.4 yards per carry. BYU as a team carried the ball 33 times for 81 yards, averaging 2.5 yards per carry. Now, obviously, when you're behind as much as BYU was, because they ultimately lost this game 42 to 24, uh, it was 14 14 at halftime, but Oregon State came alive in the second half. 28 second half points absolutely put it on BYU in the win to stay undefeated on the season. And BYU had to throw the ball more, but then their inability. Uh, to get the ground game going really, really hurt BYU in this game. Now, Cody Hoffman had a phenomenal game in his own right. 10 receptions, 102 yards. So the second straight year, he absolutely was dominant against Oregon State. But the disappointing part was that BYU could not find the answer uh, to get a big upset that would have really, in many ways, made the 2012 season whole. Uh, obviously, BYU taking on a 10th-ranked team in the country at home. You want to celebrate with your fans, hopefully have a field storming, but it wasn't meant to be. So BYU dropped to four and three on the season, a disappointing number for the Cougars, but the gauntlet was not over for BYU because they had to go out to number five, Notre Dame. Now I can attest to this game directly because I was sitting in the stands out there in South Bend. And we'll talk about that game tomorrow, man. Uh, I still cannot get over a, a one singular play in that Notre Dame game. Any of you who remember that game, i probably know exactly which one I am uh, talking about. Cause it was a play that, should have been made, but wasn't. And we'll talk about that on tomorrow's podcast. So back to it. Uh, looking forward to continuing this countdown throughout the summer. We'll play a little bit of catch up here. Maybe a couple of days where we double up on some of these games. Maybe those FCS games. You do a secondary game with the FBS game that's right around it to catch up that way. But we'll get you ready. We'll have you covered all off season long. We don't, we're not going anywhere. We do this thing every single day, no matter come rain, shine, sleet, snow. The only thing that really stops us is if I don't have an internet connection. That, that's the only thing that really slows down this BYU uh, podcast. And also one other a little kind of a heads up. Uh, now that BYU has their schedule, I'm going to start looking around and trying to get to know the Big 12. It's something I think all of us are trying to do uh, to get to know our new conference mates, speaking of the BYU uh, being a member of the Big 12 conference. I'm going to start calling around to some of our hosts here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And if we don't have a host who's doing a Big 12 podcast, I'll reach out to some of the other media members. And we'll start to break those down, do a little getting to know you when it comes to the Big 12 in coming days and weeks. So stay tuned for that. going to have a fun, fun offseason. It's a lot of new stuff. When it comes to BYU, we got basketball ongoing. They're getting ready to head to Pepperdine on Thursday. Obviously, a huge matchup at Gonzaga on Saturday. We'll have you covered all week long, so stay with us every single day talking all things BYU. Uh, once again, thank you for making us your first listen of the day. want to encourage you before we go, if you want more on the Big 12 Conference, Make sure you check out Locked On Big 12. Josh Neighbors does a great job making sure you're up to speed on everything going on in Big 12 football, basketball, and beyond. Get that available wherever you get your podcasts. It's also available on YouTube. All right, that'll do it for myself. Hope you guys are all doing fantastic out there in Cougar Nation, wherever you might be along the Wasatch Front, nationwide, or even worldwide. Hope you all are doing great. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast. See ya.